-hmm. I just want to touch on one last thing to talk about pursuing truth, learning together. And as you know, I have scholarship in certain areas and not in other areas, but all of us know certain areas better than others. And it's very interesting when you unpack things, when you really learn a subject well, when you're first learning a language, then when you've worked with a language for years and years, then when you become a scholar in a language or things like that, or there's, there's a lot. An argument can seem good, and then someone else comes and brings their argument and realizes, oh, there's more to it. So that's why when I'm invited to a college campus to give a talk, which is rare because of the controversies, but when I'm invited to come, I ask, is it possible to do a debate so that someone from the other side could pre present their views so people could, could see both sides? I, I like that because then, then you can evaluate things better. So let's just take a look at something really interesting. All right, now, I'm, I'm going to be referring to Wikipedia because it's going to give you a ton of references. If you want to actually go to the sources, Wikipedia articles can be a mixed bag. But we got lots and lots of quotes here. So... Uh, if, if you will go to the article asking the question, were the ancient Egyptians black, right? It's called the ancient Egyptian race controversy, ancient Egyptian race controversy. I want to scroll down to the second paragraph. Mainstream scholars reject the notion that Egypt was a white or black civilization. They maintain that applying modern notions of black or white races to ancient Egypt is anachronistic. So out of place time-wise. In addition, scholars reject the notion, implicit in the notion of a black or white Egypt hypothesis, that ancient Egypt was racially homogenous. Instead, skin color varied between the peoples of Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt, and Nubia, who in various eras rose to power in ancient Egypt. Now, let me stop here and say race was not an issue in the ancient world the way it is today. Many would argue that race became an issue because of white dominance trying to argue for the justification of the slave trade a couple centuries back. That race became a way for whites to keep blacks down, that you are inferior. It seems that through world history, the bigger issues were not skin color, but ethnicity. Where are you from? What group of people you were? And, and that, for example, Moses marrying a Cushite woman, the controversy was not she's a black woman, but she was a Cushite. It may have been considered inferior or whatever it was, but it wasn't because of skin color. So that's a modern construct that we're putting on things. So let's, I'm just going to read through, scrolling down the article. Oh, I'll start. These are all Egyptologists and, and Egyptian scholars and things like that. Uh, Barbara Mertz wrote in 2011, Egyptian civilization was not Mediterranean or African, Semitic or Hamitic, black or white, but all of them. It was, in short, Egyptian. Catherine Bard wrote in 2014, Egyptians were the indigenous farmers of the lower Nile Valley, neither black nor white as races are conceived of today. Federico Pujaval and Albert Connerl wrote in 2017, there are defenders of the theory that the pharaohs were black and there are those who maintain that they had Caucasian origins. Neither theory is provable. Nikki Nelson wrote in 2020, Ancient Egypt was neither black nor white, and the repeated attempts by advocates of either ideology to seize the ownership of ancient Egypt simply perpetuates the old tradition, one of removing agency and control of their heritage from the modern population living along the banks of the Nile, and on and on. Now you say, but I can show you quotes from scholars who say they're black. Yeah, the, the issue is that people have devoted a lifetime to studying this, studying skeletal remains, DNA evidence, looking at the iconography, the pictures, and linguistic descriptions, and everything else, are divided. That's all I want you to understand, that top scholars who have devoted a lifetime to this, who can read Egyptian hieroglyphic, who understand the cultural background and things like that, who are experts on Northern African and, uh, civilizations and Middle Eastern civilizations, and on and on, they differ over this, but many say that Egypt was not homogenous color-wise, and that many would say it looked, it, in ancient times, the way it looks today, which is multiple different peoples of multiple different colors. So there's a useful article um, on a, just a, a convenient blog. It's not by a scholar, but it's just a, a convenient blog about tales of times forgotten that asks about the, how ancient Egyptians looked, and it's called Were the Ancient Egyptians Black? So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to make my way through uh, a number of texts here. Let me just grab my, my notes here. I'm just going to make my way through this, 
And here we have an illustration of my, uh, Mahepri from his copy of the Book of the Dead showing him with black skin. So here's an ancient Egyptian who's clearly depicted as black. All right, no question about that. Now let's go to another one. This, this is a picture, it's somewhere between, uh, a picture of uh, ancient statues, somewhere between 2649 and 2609, depicting Prince Rahotep and his wife, Nofret. So he is light brown skin and she's white skin. Now this is ancient Egypt, okay? I, j- I just want you to see this, some of the diversity. And notice also that generally men are painted with a little darker skin than women because the women were inside more. So it's just, it's fascinating to look at. He's got light brown skin. She's got white skin. Okay, uh, here's, here's another one. A painting from the Beverly chamber of, Beverly chamber of Nefertiti, dated between 1298 and 1235. And again, she is light brown skinned here as, as well. Um, Another, another image, light brown skin image, a man hunting from a uh, tomb painting around 1350 B.C. And then the one that's the most interesting of all, it's a 19th century illustration of a book of Gates fresco from the tomb of Seti. So he ruled 1290 to 1279. It shows on the left, you have someone who is pale skinned and he stood for someone from Libya, which was in Africa. Next is someone who was actually black-skinned, and he stood for someone from Nubia. And, of course, there were many Nubians in Egypt. The next is a pale Southwest Asian, pale skin, and then the last one is a light brown-skinned Egyptian. Isn't that interesting? So the Egyptian is different than the Nubian and is different than the Libyan and the Asian. It's just very interesting. And then the famous Beni Hassan tomb painting which shows Semites who are coming into Egypt, and the Semites are light brown skinned, and the Egyptians are dark brown skinned. And, and when you look at pictures of Egypt from two, 300 years after the time of Jesus, and, and you've got these portraits and things like that, and there's one after another back on that article I, I mentioned, Tales of Times Forgotten, you got the whole diversity. You got people who look white, people who look black, people who look. Middle Eastern people, wide, wide ranging. The features, the skin color, wide, wide ranging. That's the reality. That's the reality. The idea that the Israelites had to be black to fit in there is a misreading of history. It's a misreading of history. It's called Kemet because it was black soil by by the Nile. So in any case, there are two sides to every story. And if the ancient Israelites were brown skin, white skin, green skin, blue skin, black skin is utterly immaterial to me. That's not the issue of anything. If if Jesus was a black man, a white man, a a red man, yellow man, that's utterly immaterial in terms of salvation. And in terms of our own origins, we all come from different parts of the world. Ashkenazi Jews just means Jews from Germany that lived in Germany because Germany was called Ashkenaz beginning around the 1100s. By, by, by the rabbis and Jewish scholars, they call it Ashkenaz. So if you live there, you're an Ashkenazi Jew, like I'm an American Jew, right? That's, that's, all, that's all it means, that's all it means. For us to fight over this or divide over this or make skin color the issue, it's not the issue. Now, if you feel a heritage has been robbed, well, let's go back and study and see what we can learn and see what can be recovered because there's a rich black Jewish history that must be recovered. And some of my colleagues are working on that and, and what they keep learning and discovering is beautiful and wonderful. Let's find out about all the lost tribes, etc. by all means. But to make it all about race, to be dogmatic about some of these things with ancient history, it's, it's a mistake. It's a big mistake. Let's put our energies elsewhere. The biggest thing is, are you in Jesus? Are you in Yeshua? Jew or Gentile, secondary. Do you know the Lord? That's the bigger issue. Hey, friends, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did... Click on one of the boxes on the screen, check out another one of our videos and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. You know, we discovered that about 60% of you that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. So subscribe today doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want to support our work, Line of Fire and all the things that we do, follow one of the links on the screen below.